Gem International is a new diamond explorer in the richest diamond producing country in Africa, located next to the fourth largest producing diamond mine in the world. International Spotlight is on an 1109 carat diamond recently discovered in Africa by a fellow Canadian junior with a proven operator and finance team. Gem International trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol GI. Visit us at gemdiamondmining.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. Our guest is Gary Savage, President and CEO of SmartMoneyTrackerPremium.com. Welcome back to the show, Gary. Thanks for having me on again, Jim. Everybody keeps saying those equity markets can't keep climbing, and yet every day when we get up, the chart's all green again. Yeah. It just seems like there's a never-ending bid under the market, doesn't it, Jim? I, you know, I really, it, it just doesn't look like the market's going to be allowed to, to go down ahead of the elections. Of course, uh, we're not far off from the anniversary of last year's Black Friday. How do you think stocks are going to react going into that, or do people even think about it now? No, oh, I don't know that they think about it all that much, uh, I've been expecting a, you know, some kind of corrective move uh, in the stock market. We're we're actually overdue, uh, what I call a daily cycle low. It's a smaller degree cycle. Um, usually get one of those by oh day between day 35 and day 40, and I believe if I'm not mistaken, we're on day 38 or 39 now, and it hasn't even started. So you know, every time the market looks like it's getting ready to, to move down and correct. It, it just seems to materialize this buyer in the futures market that pushes it back up. So I, I've kind of given up hope on any kind of corrective move. And, and uh, maybe, you know, I'll, I'll look for one maybe after the elections. But until then, uh, I don't have a whole, whole lot of hope of the market being able to correct ahead of that. And oil seems to be enjoying new popularity. Yeah, I think the last time we talked, I... I mentioned that that oil was moving down into an intermediate cycle low but uh, it was getting late enough to where I, I thought it would you know was was ready to bottom soon and and it has and we've got a, a nice initial rally out of that um, that larger intermediate degree uh, cycle bottom uh, we did get uh, quite stretched above the 10 day moving average and, and we got really overbought uh, five day RSI at 90. Uh, and, you know, we're getting pretty close to the uh, June highs, so I was looking for some kind of a short-term pullback. Uh, I don't I don't think it's going to be real significant, just a mild pullback. And then uh, I think the dip buyers will come in and they'll, they'll push oil up to uh, at least test that June high before this uh, smaller daily cycle tops, and then we get maybe a little bit longer correction, something that might last seven, eight, nine days, but uh, I'm of the opinion that uh, by you know, November, we're probably going to see oil at least at 60, and we may get as high as 70, 75 dollars before this larger intermediate cycle uh, tops, and we get another um, more significant correction, something like what we just had from uh, June to July. That was an intermediate cycle decline. So the next one of those probably isn't due until November, would be my guess. Usually, you know, September, Labor Day marks the end of the driving season. Is it going to continue longer this year because the weather's been so good? Well, the the hurricane season doesn't really end until November, so I suspect we're probably oil will continue to to move up uh, into November, along with the stock market. I think. The, uh, one or the other, either oil will pull stocks higher or stocks will pull oil higher, but I don't really expect either one of them to, to top until uh, at least after the elections. Will gold continue to be strong? Uh, you know, the last couple times we talked, I was expecting gold to just turn sideways. It gotten stretched way too far above the 200-day moving average. And you, you get the forces of uh, regression to the mean trying to pull it back down. So uh, I didn't expect gold to do much in August, and that continues to be my stance. Where it's still the whole sector is just too too far above the 200-day moving average to 
be ready to deliver another leg up. I think it will give us another leg up, but I, I think it's going to be stuck in this sideways churn for uh, several more weeks yet before that next leg up can begin. Is silver going to be in the same space? Well, silver uh, tends to be a lot more volatile than gold. It's it's a much thinner market. It's much easier for you know, one or two big players to push it around. Um, it, it looks to me like you probably got a couple of big players that are trying to get out of their short positions. So they're they're trying to drive silver down so they can uh, unload those shorts. But uh, you know, in in the long run, silver will follow and magnify the moves in gold. So whenever gold is ready to give us the next leg up, I suspect silver will follow it. Are there any areas right now where you're seeing more action than you expected? Um. Well, I I, I don't know that I would say more than I expected, but I think right now the uh, the sector that has the most uh, potential is probably energy, and I just say that simply because it's it's very. Uh, early in the intermediate cycle, we're, we're only on week three, whereas the stock market is on uh, week six of its intermediate cycle, and the, the precious metals are are on, uh, I believe it's it's either week nine or ten, and, and they're stuck in that consolidation. So uh, it looks to me like probably the, uh, the 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 area that has the most potential, let's say over the next month, month and a half, is probably energy. Uh, I like the small caps too. They're they're due to catch up to the rest of the market, and and I continue to be uh, bullish on biotech. I think that's the sector that will lead the next bubble phase in the stock market over the next four or five years. Biotech got beaten down pretty hard, so it also needs to catch up with the rest of the market. So uh, I I would say energy, small caps, and biotech are are my picks for the next uh, month to two months is is probably outperforming other sectors. We'll have more with Gary Savage right after the break. I'm Larry Ray, President and CEO of American Manganese Inc. Listed on the TSX Venture, ticker symbol AMY, A-M-Y, with proprietary patents in the U.S., China, and South Africa. Our focus is on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. China recently legislated the responsibility for recycling onto their electric vehicle manufacturers and importers. For more information, please visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Welcome back. We're speaking with Gary Savage. Gary, how is the financial sector doing? It was uh, looked like it was trying to recover the 200-day moving average. So, you know that that, that actually might be another sector that could uh, outperform uh, the general stock market, the S and P. Um, it also got beaten down pretty hard. So, you know, maybe maybe there's a fourth one there. I should add into my uh, list of preferred sectors. Uh, the banking sector might be another one that could outperform. Has the banking sector been hit as hard as people expected with the downturn in energy and all these oil companies owing money? Well, it did It did take a pretty good hit as we moved down into that uh, seven-year cycle low, um, which bottomed in February, beginning of February. The banking sector did take a pretty good hit, uh, and it's, it is recovering, and it, uh, but it also has a lot of, a lot of uh, making up uh, to do, whereas the S&P is at new all-time highs, the banking sector is not. So I would expect the banking sector has to catch up to the rest of the market also, the same as the as the small caps and the biotech and the energy. And I guess it didn't hurt the banks either that U.S. home sales were almost at nine-year record highs in July. A few mortgages were written. Yeah, I, I would say so. I, you know, I, we've talked about this before. I'm just not in the camp that says that the the U.S. is going into recession, and I, I tend to think that uh, Europe is coming out of recession, not going deeper into recession. So uh, I, I don't see a catalyst for the markets in general to turn down, and I don't see a catalyst now with oil improving anyway. I don't see a real big catalyst for the banking sector to collapse. I think the uh, the bankruptcies in the energy sector are, are probably done. We're almost done. So uh, I think the banking sector is going to recover along with the rest of the market. Why do you think people have been so pessimistic? Well, yeah, I think part of it is just human nature. We uh, 
you know, you see a wreck on the side of the road and everybody has to stop and look. So uh, it's probably just hardwired into our DNA to some extent. But a part of it also is the uh, we still have that memory of, of 2008 and 2009. It's still fresh in our minds. And so, you know, a lot of people are, are looking for a, uh, a repeat of that. Same thing happened, uh, you know, in, in 32 when we had the, the Great Depression. It took, you know, 25, 30 years before people were uh, comfortable investing in the stock market again. So, uh, you know, I, I see this a lot. You, you've got a lot of analysts that are anticipating a, uh, you know, a, a repeat of 2008 and 2009. And, and, you know, history is pretty clear that it just doesn't typically, something like that just doesn't typically, you know, lightning doesn't strike twice. Uh, the government, you know, learned its lesson that it's just, it's going to print, 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 and it's just not going to allow that to happen again. I think the risk is not to the downside. I think the risk is that they print too much, keep interest rates too low too long, and they create another series of bubbles. So, you know, rather than a stock market crash, I think the risk is more to the upside that they create a stock market bubble and then uh, you know, as as they always do, a bubble will pop, and uh, and then that's when you have the downside risk. But I think we have to get the bubble first. What about big cities like Vancouver, where it seems real estate has peaked and it's going to adjust for a bit now? Well, generally speaking, the the further anything gets stretched above the mean, and the more uh, violent it has to correct back, uh, and usually uh, price will swing about as far back in the other direction as it uh, went to the upside. So you know, depending on how overvalued uh, Vancouver real estate prices are, I would expect a move, uh, you know, over, it's not a sudden move, but over uh, you know, the next uh, two, three, four, five years, um, real estate values will probably come back down to uh, the average where they should be and then uh, overshoot to the downside. Uh, by quite a bit, by you know, roughly how much they overshot to the upside. That's typically what happens. After the major correction to the markets earlier this year, a lot of people held on to their cash. Have they started putting it back into action again, or are they just still holding on to it? Well, um, the retail trader, I follow some sentiment levels, and you know, the time to get worried is when the retail trader, the emotional traders, uh, are overly bullish. And the time to buy is when they are overly bearish. And uh, ever since we got the, the correction last uh, August and then, the, you know, the final bottom in February this year, uh, the retail traders have been um, considerably bearish. They, they are, like I said, they, they had that memory of 2009 and they expect a repeat. So, you know, this is what keeps driving the market higher. There's just a lot of fuel still for people to, to continue to come into the market because the, the average retail trader, he's, he's looking for a repeat of 2009. And so they are uh, still very bearish, even though the market is at new highs. Um, so there's, there's lots and lots of fuel still to go. I, I think, like I said, I think uh, we've got a bubble phase ahead of us over the next four or five years. Everybody's calling this phase Tina. There is no alternative. Um, well, uh, you know, you definitely don't want to put your money in bonds. You're getting a negative yield in most of the world. So I, I would tend to agree. I think you have to, to put your money, you know, unless you want to put it into cash and, and, you know, risk the government devaluing the purchasing power of your currency. I think you have to put it into assets somewhere, and and you know, as you know from our conversations, my uh, thesis was that everything was going to go up together in the uh, years ahead. Uh, so you could you could put your money virtually anywhere. You could put it in, in gold, commodities, oil, stocks, uh, anything except uh, currencies, and um, and I probably w- wouldn't put it in the bond market. But uh, other than that, I, th- I think all the uh, other assets are going to go up together. Gary, the U.S. dollar, has it peaked or is it going to keep rising? Well, we've talked about this one before, too. And, and my feeling is is that <clears throat> the dollar 
looks to me like it put in a cl classic double top. Um, and, and and then the, the last time we talked, I, I said, you know, watch that 200-day moving average. Uh, the dollar, uh, we, you know, we got a rally in the dollar. It managed to uh, marginally regain that 200-day moving average, and then they, it lost it again. Uh, it won't. And it then bounced right up to the 200-day moving average and then turned back down again. I'm pretty confident that the intermediate cycle has topped. That's a classic sign of a, uh, the start of a bear market. Price starts to spend a lot of time below the 200-day moving average. And, uh, and you'll usually you'll get one or two attempts to regain the 200-day moving average uh, that just don't stick. They, they fail and price moves back below it. And then at some point you'll get that one last test of the 200-day moving average. And then uh, uh, not long after that you'll get a recognition phase where the the, the price, uh, usually it drops precipitously, maybe a waterfall type event. And that is the uh, that's the slap in the face, so to speak, where the, the, the market uh, finally has to acknowledge that a bear market has begun. And everybody that's uh, you know long the market, and you know, they think they understand the, the fundamentals, they realize that that they are uh, wrong. The fundamentals are not bullish, and that they're caught on the wrong side of the market. And uh, and that's where then everybody has to get out, and you get that uh, typically that waterfall event. My theory has been that we're going to see that recognition phase. Uh, late September, early October this year, um, and. And my thought is, is that the dollar will continue to grind lower. You know, it, it'll, there'll be bounces, but it'll continue to grind lower. And then when we break that support zone at uh, 92, uh, that's when I think we get our recognition phase, when the the dollar just uh, falls out of bed, so to speak, and uh, and the market realizes that the, the dollar is not going up like everybody has been thinking that it's, it's starting a bear market. So. I think we're well on our way. Uh, just watch the dollar over the next uh, uh, couple, couple months, and, and I think we're going to get that recognition phase here soon. Gary, thank you so much for chatting with us. My pleasure, Jim. My guest has been Gary Savage, President and CEO of SmartMoneyTrackerPremium.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio. You can find us on Twitter at TalkDigitalNet. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Questions for the show can be emailed to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.